Hello oh, guys and gals and welcome. So today starts the uh, beginning of a new series and uh, and this series is actually about um, unique items. So I do tend and tend to obviously finish the uh, uh, rune word series. I'm working on the rest of the rune words. Some of them are a little bit uh, difficult to get my hands on um, and I don't want to misrepresent them. So uh, I think I've only got like maybe 10 or 15 rune words left and uh, and, and that will be the entire series. Uh, this series is going to be about unique items specifically. Now, I did do a series a little while back uh, before Diablo 2 Resurrected that was about um, like unique items in general, and I kind of briefly went over each individual item um, in like a, a, an entire video. But what I was actually planning on doing this time is I'm going to go over the items themselves one by one and make a video about each item. Um, I'm also going to upgrade those items um, and represent them in their multiple forms, like for instance, ethereal, non-ethereal. Um, you know, if we have, uh, for instance, a normal difficulty pole arm or something like that, um, what it's like when you upgrade it, um, and what it's like when you upgrade it a, a second time to the uh, elite tier, and uh, it will go over various things like that about uh, strength requirement. Uh, attack, uh, ethereal, uh, non-ethereal, things like that. Uh, but to make things easy, we're going to start out with some elite items, which are not upgradable, uh, but they do come in ethereal and non-ethereal abilities uh, or, or uh, status. And uh, and we have here, um, if you guys can't tell, it is uh, Reaper's Toll. So Reaper's Toll can come into the ethereal form um, and we have two different versions here we've got the ethereal version uh, which is 61 to 717 damage and we've got the uh, non-ethereal version which is 40 to 479 damage uh, the level requirement on this is level 75 and one thing that i want you to note right away is that the ethereal version has 10 less requirements on both the dexterity and the strength this is something that ethereal items have so it's not a percentage it is literally just 10 flat. So no matter what the item is, it will have 10 less requirements if it is an ethereal version. Um, as you can see, it's 89 dexterity, and it's only 79 on the ethereal, and it's 114 strength, and it's only 104 on the Reaper's Toll, which means that you can use this at a much lower level with the uh, ethereal version. Obviously, the ethereal versions are sought after to put on mercenaries, so if you really wanted to uh, to put this on a mercenary, that is definitely going to give them some very nice damage. And um, the main benefit of Reaper's Toll is honestly the Decrepify on Striking, which is uh, a very, 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 very nice effect. It's a 33% chance to cast level 1 Decrepify, and, uh, and we're going to have to take a look at that. Um, there are some variables on this particular weapon. So uh, let's go over this weapon together, shall we? So uh, right off the bat, you'll see that it has an enhanced damage of 240%. That does vary between 190 to 240%. So a pretty large variable there of 50%. Uh, we also have ignores target's defense, which is very, very nice. Uh, that's going to help whoever is using this uh, to be able to uh, make sure you're going to hit any target that's not a boss. Uh, do keep in mind that ignores target's defense does not work on bosses. Um, it also does not counter level difference. So if you are a very low level character, like uh, unfortunately this level, this, this weapon is a level 75 item, so you're not going to be that low. But if you are a uh, lower level character fighting a very high level character or a higher level monster, there is a penalty for uh, level difference and um, an ITD does not overcome level difference penalty. Uh, however, if you're a level 75 character fighting a level 75 monster, there's no level difference penalty and that doesn't come into play. Uh, it has 4 to 44 cold damage, which is it's nice for have a chilling effect. Although if you are a necromancer and you're hoping to uh, keep your corpses intact, uh, it's probably not going to uh, to work because cold damage is going to make some of those corp people monsters shatter. Uh, we also have 15% life stolen per hit, which is absolutely excellent to have on a mercenary weapon, but also nice to have on a player weapon too if you if you plan on using a Reaper's Toll for some reason. Uh, we have 33% deadly strike, which is a chance to do double damage, and it will stack with critical strike in a uh, a non uh, linear way. So you know it's not just going to give you times four. But what it'll do is Critical Strike will roll first, and Deadly Strike will roll second. And uh, as long as one of them succeeds, then you will end up with double damage. Both of them cannot succeed, because if one succeeds, then the other one will not roll. And, um, like, for instance, uh, Critical Strike, I believe, rolls first, 
So if critical strike fails, then the deadly strike will roll. And if that succeeds, then you will get the deadly strike double damage. If critical strike succeeds, the deadly strike doesn't roll, and uh, and so forth and so on. So it's it's uh it's it's nice because what it does is it helps you get that double damage effect. Um, you know, say for instance, you had thirty percent uh, critical strike and thirty three percent deadly strike, you would have a higher chance of getting a double effect. Um, not you know additive, but it would be more than what is stated. Like for instance, let's say if you had a 50% critical strike and a 50% deadly strike, it would probably work out somewhere to around 75% chance to get that double damage, which isn't going to be at, you know 50 plus 50. It's going to be 50% roll and then another 50% roll, and then you have probability that comes into play. Uh, we also have negative 25% requirements, which means this is going to be wieldable by just about anybody. Um, in fact, your mercenary should be able to use this um, well before level 75, uh, even though he can't actually put it on until his level hits level 75. So that's important. Um, this weapon has a lot of uses, and, uh, and those uses mainly involve mercenaries um, and players who need a physical damage reduction. So we can't look at something that has Decrepify on it without also looking at um, the monster resistance formula. So on the screen here, I have put a formula, and it shows Amp Decrepify, which is down at the bottom. So we have Decrepify reduces the physical resistance by 50% and is at 20% effectiveness versus immunes. Uh, we have a 50% divided by 5, which means a 10% reduction in a physical resistance. So whenever your mercenary uses his this weapon, or when you use this weapon on a monster, the physical resistance of the monster will be reduced by 10%. So any monster that's at 100% or 110%, or actually 109%, I believe, um, they will be broken by this effect, which means that they will no longer be immune, and if you are a physical damage character, a highly physical damage character, this is going to help you immensely, because that monster will no longer be able to resist your, uh, your physical damage, which means you're actually going to be able to hit, hurt them. Uh, now, the downside to level 1 Decrepify is that it does not last very long at all. So at level 1, Decrepify only has a duration of, uh, I believe it's 4 seconds. Uh, yes, yes, 4 seconds. Uh, 4 seconds is, is hardly anything at all. Uh, but Decrepify does other things besides just reduce physical immunity, and we're going to go over that as well. So uh, Decrepify is a 50% reduction in multiple things, okay? So it reduces the speed of the monster by half. It, it basically applies a slows target by of 50%. Um, it reduces the damage of the monster by half, which means he will be doing less damage to your mercenary and to your army and to you while he's under the effect of Decrepify. So 50% less. Um, he will also have 50% less physical resistance. So a very, very awesome curse for a very, 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 very awesome weapon. Um, a lot of people will actually look for uh, Reaper's Toll specifically to get that Decrepify on striking, um, especially if they are a very, very intense physical damage uh, physical damage character. Uh, physical damage characters tend to be um, things like a, uh, like a Strafe Boazon or a, uh, a Barbarian uh, who's using Whirlwind. Um, a Blade Fury Assassin. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, characters who can definitely um, benefit from having the ability to break physical immunities. Now, granted, there are other ways to break physical immunities, like, for instance, uh, Amplify Damage, which can be gotten on various other items. Like, um, rare items can have a chance to proc Amplify Damage. Um, you can also find Amplify Damage procs on the uh, Atmos Scarab, um, the Gavel of Pain, um, there are a lot of different items in the game that have amplified damage procs. Uh, you can also go with some bow mercenary items, like, for instance, Witch Wild String has a chance to cast amplified damage. Um, there are also other items that cast Decrepify, uh, like, for instance, uh, Lawbringer, I believe is the name of it. Uh, Lawbringer is a good weapon for amplified damage, and if you happen to be in a situation where that is, um, that is useful, then that will make some sense. Um, however, it, with the mercenary, you don't actually have to wield the item yourself, so you're kind of uh, utilizing 
the other effects. Um, I believe Executioner's Justice also has Decrepify. Um, but I think it's like when you kill a target, not when you when you strike. So there, you know, there are various effects. You have the on striking, you've got the on attack, you've got the on death, um, and various things like that. So it's it's important to, to keep note of what those specific things are. Uh, the duration of Decrepify is is a rather big downside, and um, put that to good use. I think personally, um, Decrepify tends to be a little bit inferior to amplify damage when it comes to increasing physical damage. Decrepify is is definitely very, very nice for a lot of the effects that it has. Uh, most notably is the effect of um, reducing all of the damage of all the monsters nearby and slowing them down. It's definitely useful for that particular purpose. You notice that as the monsters are slowed and they're not dishing out as much damage to me, it's much easier to be in the middle of them. So as a uh, melee character, someone who's actually in the thick of it, and who's actually in there, you know, beating the crap out of a monster, Decrepify is actually going to help you out a ton, because it's going to make the monsters attack slower, it's going to make the monsters, uh, you know, have a much harder time, um, you know, landing hits, because as you move around the battlefield, um, it may take them a little while to initiate an attack, and by the time you they have initiated the attack, you're moved out of range. Um, also, when they do actually hit you, when Decrepify is up, the damage is reduced by 50%, the physical damage. So it's very nice for those characters who are in there, in the thick of it, and who are actually, you know, dishing out the damage. Like, for instance, if you were a Whirlwind Barbarian, um, your Mercenary could be applying Decrepify, which would help you out. Now, do keep in mind, though, that you cannot proc effects on Whirlwind. So if I were to use the Thresher, I would not get the procs. But if you put it on the mercenary, you'll get the procs, which is uh, which is probably what you'd want to do. Now, the ethereal version would be ideal for your mercenary, but if you don't have the ethereal version, you could, of course, use the, the regular version as well. The damage would be a little bit less, but you would at least have the ability to uh, have that decrepify uh, spamming going on on your mercenary. Now, threshers tend to be... Um, rather fast pole arms. Uh, they're a little bit faster than most. Uh, they do have kind of a bad range, if I remember correctly. And um, let me pull that up real quick. All right, so here we have it here. So a uh, Giant Thresher is a range of four. A uh, Colossus Falls is a range of two. Uh, the Great Poleaxe is a range of four, the Cryptic Axe is a range of three, and the Thresher is the least range of the entire lot, uh, with a range of one. Uh, very, very, very poor range on the Thresher. Now, there is something to note about this, though, is that on a player, this does actually make a big deal. Um, having a range of one is a terrible, terrible, terrible range. Um, usually you want to have at least two or higher. In fact, that's the reason why a lot of people will make their uh, rune words and things like that in a Berserker's Axe because they are specifically trying to get away from one range and Berserker's Axes have a range of three. Um, however, when you put an item on a Mercenary, the Mercenary does not get affected by the range. Mercenaries have a flat range of two no matter what. And because the um, thresh, the, the mercenaries um, have a base range of two no matter what, the Thresher actually ends up being a pretty decent choice for mercenaries because they're not affected by range. If they were affected by weapon range, there are a lot better choices that you could put on a mercenary. Um, but because they are not affected by weapon range and mercenaries actually deal a two, a two range no matter what, um, the Thresher is actually a pretty solid choice. Now, the last thing that we need to talk about here um, is the TC class. So, uh, where do you find this item? Well, Threshers, in particular, have a TC class of uh, 72, uh, which is pretty high, but it's not, like, ridiculously high like a lot of the other items in the game. Uh, it, 72 just generally means you're going to find it mainly in Hell difficulty. Um, you don't really have to go anywhere super special to find a TC-872 class item. Uh, most 
class, uh, most monsters in the game will drop a Thresher. Um, now, the answer to uh, whether it will drop a Reaper's Toll, though, is a little, is the same. So you're gonna you're gonna be able to find a um, Reaper's Toll from just about any Hell difficulty monster. Uh, Treasure class 72 is essentially a level 72 zone. Um, level 85 or TC class 84 is basically a level 85 zone. Um, and then finally, the highest is TC class 87. Now, a giant thresher is a TC class 87. And giant thresher is the next up, essentially, from the thresher. It's uh, it's kind of a different class altogether. And the giant thresher has a, um, a range of four, by the way. Um, so, for instance, if you wanted to find a giant thresher, you would have to go to a level 85 zone, like the pit or ancient tunnels. Um, because that they only drop there. However, if you were farming specifically for a Reaper's Toll, you wouldn't have to go specifically to level 85 zones uh, because most of Hell difficulty is high enough to drop TC Class 72 items. Um, you're going to be able to get a Reaper's Toll from the Cow level, for instance, which is a level 81 zone. So level 81 is high enough to drop a, uh, a Thresher, and since level 81 is also high enough to drop the Reaper's Toll, you can farm in the Cow level and find a Reaper's Toll. Um, I like to point out where you can find these items, uh, just simply because I know a lot of people are not just pulling up these videos to, you know, to shoot the shoot the crap, so to speak, uh, they actually want to find these items, or maybe they already found it and they'd like to look at the information on it. Anyway, I've uh, already babbled on probably about as far as I need to when it comes to uh, this particular item. Um, it has a really cool name, also, so that's uh, that's also that. Uh, anyway, as uh, always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and uh, keep watching.